Okay, everyone, we're going to follow on with um, Dr. Mary Dillon. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much, Mary, for inviting me here this afternoon. We've had a wonderful morning with the master's students over with Eileen and Rita, and uh, we had a fantastic presentation from an RAMP in stroke care. It's really, really good, and, and informed, I suppose, our whole, uh, my session, and certainly Anne-Marie's as well. It was very, very good. So, yes, in the board, we have 217 RAMPs, registered advanced nurse practitioners, and eight RAMPs. And... Um, um, I suppose uh, when it comes to the standards and requirements, the history is a working group of advanced practice was set up in 2014 and uh, I joined the board in 2015 and at that stage we had one document with nurses and midwives all on the one set of standards and requirements. But I suppose the midwives um, base their standards on the five principles, whereas um, nurses, we have six domains. So we went to public consultation with two separate documents, the nurses with their six domains and the midwives on five principles, and we got a lot of feedback. And at that stage, um, the midwives committee decided that they would develop their own document in terms of advanced practice for midwives based on the five principles. Now, Dawn Johnson is the director of midwifery in the board at the moment, and she's leading out on that. And um, the advanced practice nursing, we have now gone to, um, we've, we've had it approved. So we have our standards and requirements for uh, advanced practice nursing. Now they're with the designer at the moment. These are our nurse registration program standards and requirements. These are our undergraduate um, standards and requirements. These come into operation on the 1st of September, 2018. And what I'm gonna talk about now, the um, advanced practice nursing standards and requirements, I have them up, but they're only draft. They're with the designer at the moment, and they will be up on the web late this week or, or next week, okay? And we've defined advanced practice as a career pathway for registered nurses committed to continuing professional development and clinical supervision to practice at a higher level of capability as independent, autonomous and expert practitioners. RAMPs have met the board's criteria for registration to enter the advanced practice division of the register. And going back to 2014, Professor Mary Carney uh, led a out on the literature and extensive literature review, and I know we cited some of your work, uh, Professor Cashin, in terms of, of the standards. So as I said, the standards requirements were approved by the board just in March, and if you were to break the document up, I suppose you'd get the, the competences are the first part uh, of the document, and then the standards for approval of HEIs, associated healthcare providers, and education programs leading to registration is the second part of the document. And that part of the document, Mary, you'll be very familiar with the post-registration standards and requirements, and we really just have, have deep linked the post-registration standards and requirements but also we've added in specifics in terms of clinical supervision, in terms of clinical competency, uh, working group with the uh, healthcare providers so that it's, it's very much um, at the end of the day that, that the, the bespoke masters, I guess, to meet the, the need in terms of clinical competency. We, um, I suppose, in the board, um, had legislative authority since 2010 in terms of advanced practice. Prior to that, it was the National Council. They determined the four core concepts, and then in leg the National Council was dissolved in 2010, and legislation statutory instrument three, statutory instrument 689, empowered the board with additional functions. So what we do right now is we determine um, applications for accreditation of posts, and we also um, register nurses and midwives as either RANPs, RAMPs. So it's very, very clear in the legislation, those statutory instruments specify out exactly what it is we do in, uh, in the board in terms of our role. And we continue to accredit posts, which in some ways, I guess, um, has contributed maybe to, to um, um, being a, a regulatory sort of um, inhibitor because at the end of the day, the service should determine what um, advanced practice looks like. So um, very soon, that piece of legislation in terms of accreditation of posts will no longer rest with the board and it will be back to the service and the directors uh, of service will determine what areas they need to develop. So we're currently on our website to find a consultation in terms of rules, and these rules will revoke statutory instrument three and statutory instrument six, eight, nine, and the new rule then will um, specify the rules board. 
the role of the board rather. So as I say, going back to uh, the National Council in 2008, they identified autonomy, expert, professional and clinical leadership and research as the four core concepts for advanced practice. And we've been working with those continuously since then. Uh, since 2010 since it came to the board. Going forward, as I said, the four core concepts will be replaced by six domains of competence and standards of practice. The transition we recognise will take time, so any nurse who has commenced his or her portfolio of master's students one who are nearing the completion of their portfolios, they won't be expected to change to the six domains, they can still stay with the four core concepts. We are meeting in the board, uh, the executive uh, in April and then in May we've planned to bring forward uh, processes in terms of timeline so that it's it's um, very clear in terms of when the four core concepts will be phased out. So here we have like our model for advanced practice. So if you look, it's foundation stones are at the base and philosophy of nursing, that's actually values for nurses. So that goes back to Anne-Marie's session in the Department of Health. They have a position paper whereby uh, we work with the Department of Health and the UNMSD and the HSC to determine, determine the values for nurses and midwives. So we've care, compassion and commitment. So what we're saying is all advanced practice uh, services going forward should be built on the philosophy of nursing with care, compassion and commitment uh, at the core. Commitment then, I suppose, is to do with, you know, a, a vision for advanced practice in terms of service and the work that's involved in preparing a service for advanced practice. Governance for quality in terms of making sure that there is a professional line and that there is um, a, a clinical line in terms of accountability. Memorandum of understanding and, and service level agreements are also there. Autonomy and accountability, because you are working at a higher level, you must be able to take accountability for that. Policies, procedures, protocols and guidelines are there. Referral pathways, that these are already established. Clinical supervision in place, responsibility for practice, collaboration, again, no one works in silos, so therefore you must be able to collaborate with the interprofessional team, and that you have a caseload in terms of autonomous practice as well. The six domains are the uh, highlighted there. As I said, they build on the six domains, and maybe that answers your question in terms of you know the, the career pathway. So down the line, you know we're not starting this new uh, standards requirement until 2018, but nurses coming into the system in the future, they'll start off at six domains, and then they can build on the six domains right up to advanced practice level. At the end of the day, then we see quality, evidence-based, safe, person-centered care, and a higher level of capability, whereby people have vision, they have the competencies, and then that they're able to expand their practice to meet service, resulting in enhanced service, uh, health services demonstrated by RAMP performance outcomes, so that they're constantly um, reviewing and evaluating. So the six domains of competence, then domain one is professional values, as I've mentioned, and the standard there is that the RAMP will apply ethically sound solutions to complex issues related to individuals and populations. And I suppose what we wanted to do there was to um, be explicit in terms of what distinguishes a CNS from a, a registered nurse to an, an RAMP in terms of complexity. So the indicators then, and these are cues, which are accountability and responsibility as a lead healthcare professional. So RAMPs in Ireland are lead healthcare professionals. They articulate safe boundaries, but they uh, can timely refer and collaborate with others when the patient or person presenting is outside their scope of practice and their capability. Demonstrate leadership by practicing compassionately and articulate and promote the role in clinical, political and professional contexts. Clinical decision making then, and the standard there is the RAMP will utilize advanced knowledge, skills and abilities to engage in senior decision making. Um, so in other words, the, the cues are that you have comprehensive holistic health assessment, synthesize and interpret assessment information, demonstrate timely use of diagnostics and exhibit comprehensive knowledge of therapeutic interventions. Domain three is knowledge and cognitive, so the RAMP will actively contribute to the professional body of knowledge related to his or her area of practice by providing leadership in the translation of new knowledge to practice, educating others, demonstrating a vision through research, critical thinking and experiential learning, and demonstrate accountability with considering access, cost and clinical effectiveness. Domain four is communication and interpersonal, and the RAMP will negotiate and advocate with other health professionals to ensure that the beliefs, rights, and wishes of the person are never compromised. 
by communicating effectively and share in accordance with legal professional regulatory requirements. Leadership in professional practice, so this plan of care, and this is shared with the person and other members of the venture professional team. Facilitate clinical supervision and mentorship. So we mentioned this already in terms of RIFs providing clinical supervision and mentorship to their colleagues. And utilize IT to record all aspects of care. Management and team competencies, then the RIP will minimize and manage risk to people who access the service and staff at individual, departmental and organizational level through collaborative risk assessment and promotion of a safe environment. I suppose that's new in terms of it's, it's um, it was uh, in the other four domains, but it was less explicit. Uh, but as an RIMP and senior decision making, we want the RIMP to be at the senior decision making level and equally to be involved in risk assessment by promoting a culture of quality care, proactively seeking feedback and implementing practice changes. Leadership and professional scholarship then is the last domain and the RIMP will lead in multidisciplinary team planning for transitions across the continuum of care. So to demonstrate clinical leadership is the design and evaluation of services, engage in health policy development, identify gaps in the provision of care and services and lead in managing and implementing change. So advanced practice nursing is all about the patient having mutually agreed goals built on the values for nurses and midwives care, compassion and commitment and the philosophy of nursing. And whilst there is great emphasis on outcomes and reducing waiting lists and positive outcomes, we also value the nurse patient relationship, the therapeutic relationship. So it's not just about encounters. As I say, the current process is that we are still accrediting posts under the current legislation that is moving back to the service. Uh, however, it will still have to remain in place. This will be a challenge for directors of nursing and, and the service and directors of midwifery in terms of resources, culture, leadership, policies, procedures and guidelines, making sure that there are MOUs and established referral pathways for RAMPs and RAMPs, clinical governance, quality and risk management and continuous quality improvement. Right now, we, as I said, we uh, accredit posts and we also register people based on a submission of a portfolio and an application form. Within the legislation, it states right now that you have to have an offer of employment, so you cannot go into a, it's that tightly regulated currently, that you cannot take up a position and register unless you have an offer of employment. That will soon change. If you were to come forward today or to the May meeting, that you would have a master's level of or above with a substantive clinical component, clinical supervision, at least 500 hours done already, seven years post-registration experience, five years in the specialist area of practice, meet the four core concepts that I've mentioned already from the National Council, a commitment to continuing professional development, we go through the portfolio to see what you've done in terms of continuing professional development, and your arrangements, they usually have an MOU in place for ongoing clinical supervision. We have revised our criteria for registration and uh, our criteria as approved by the board in March 2017 is that you hold a master's degree or higher in nursing or a master's degree which is relevant or applicable to the advanced field of practice. The master's must be at level nine, our national framework of qualifications, and it must include at least three modular components pertaining to the relevant area of advanced practice in addition to your clinical practicum, which will demonstrate that you have been deemed competent in your clinical competencies. You have your evidence of 500 clinical supervised hours in the specialist area of practice and uh, that you demonstrate the competencies for advanced practice in your portfolio, um, the six domains, the six standards that we've identified. The board will focus on the achievement of competences as evidenced by the applicant's portfolio, their transcripts received from the HEIs. A lot of this happens already. So if someone is coming forward with their masters from um, Eileen and Rita's program right now, they have their transcripts and they equally have the clinical hours in terms of 500 um, clinical supervised hours and the clinical competencies. And we've introduced a new um, um, criteria now, which is passing an assessment by approved panel. Now, the, the um, operationalization of this has to be fully agreed by the board at the May meeting, uh, but the person coming forward for registration will, will um, come in front of the, uh, an approved panel, I suppose, to um, give them an opportunity to demonstrate, uh, you know, how they've achieved their competencies and um, that they're, they have the standards or achieved the standards. Right now, we take a report to the registration committee in terms of post accreditation, and equally, the portfolio with the report goes forward to the registration committee uh, to register in the uh, division of the register. 
So I suppose there's opportunities and challenges for everybody going forward in terms of the board because we have new processes and all change brings with it challenges and opportunities. Uh, I think directors of nursing and midwifery will also have challenges, uh, HEIs will have challenges and equally um, as we've heard from our master's students this morning, you know, they perceive that there are challenges with change uh, but at the end of the day it is about enhancing outcomes for our patients and improving the service.